Starting off at number 10 now, we have Same Faces. At the end of 2017, The Mirror posted an interesting theory about the original Toy Story movie. Have you guys ever noticed how similar the faces look in that movie? Now when I say that, you may think I mean the toys faces, right? I mean, they're all basically plastic toys. In real life, plastic toys all kind of have that similar vacant expression, a bit dead behind the eyes. However, this story pointed out that the toys actually had quite different looking faces. It was the children that looked creepily similar in the original Toy Stories movie. Early on in that movie, we see Andy playing with his toys. Later on, we see Andy's friends attending his birthday party, and they look very similar to Andy. Like, almost identical. They also look just like Andy's neighbour, Sid, the boy who likes to torture toys. What's going on here? Why does every kid in this movie have the same face? Some people say this is just a product of animation at the time, although Pixar's animation still holds up almost 25 years on, they were still limited by what they could do. Perhaps that is the reason. Others say that this isn't true, because they managed to make the toys look all so unique. Some say that the humans in the movie are actually the toys, and that what we think of the toys are really the living people, if you can get your head around that. That would also explain why they're able to move and talk, but it also produces a whole bunch of other questions. Next up on number 9 now, we have Andy's father. Fans of Toy Story will notice the absence of Andy's father throughout the Toy Story movies. Some people say that his parents just weren't together, or maybe they split up, but others think that Andy's father died. One Reddit user suggested that Woody was the last toy that Andy ever received from his father before he died. Andy's mother noticed how much Woody helped Andy through the grieving process, and so she kept buying him more and more toys to help him deal with the pain. This is why Andy's toys remained in his toy box even when he was 18 years old. They weren't just toys to him, they were his last connection to his father. Now, Despite all of this, Andy decided to give them away when he went to college, and we see how much it really hurts him to do that. If this theory is true, then the toys in Toy Story helped fill a very dark place in Andy. They were much more to Andy than just childhood toys. Moving on to number 8 now, we have The Immortals. This is a very weird theory that came from Reddit and was written by Nameless88. He said he thinks the toys in Toy Story are immortal. They cannot die. This doesn't mean they can't be destroyed, it just means they can't die of old age, so to speak. This means they will outlive every owner they ever have. The toys' time with Andy will just repeat all over again when he gets old and dies. This is quite disconcerting when you think about the tortured toys in the first movie that Sid made that are very much still alive, albeit horribly mangled, those toys are technically still alive. Perhaps they even feel the same pain as we do, and it will never, ever end unless they're incinerated. Taking them apart won't kill them. We once saw Mr. Potato Head able to feel and use his body parts even though they weren't anywhere near him. This means that as long as any part of a toy lives, they will live on forever. Another creepy thought is that if humans one day go extinct, the toys may not. They may just live on forever, kind of like wall which is another well-known Pixar movie. The toys will live on for thousands, millions, or perhaps even billions of years, unable to end their lives unless through fiery suicide. What a horrible, horrible thought. Alright, next up at number 7 now, we have Sid's family. Many people see Sid as a villainous little kid who deserves no sympathy for creating the mutant toys. Well, there is a theory that Sid is actually the product of a neglectful family. One piece of evidence for this is the rocket that was mailed to him at the house. In the 90s, ordering things online weren't as simple as they are these days. Sid must have had one of his parents order it for him, and they must not have cared that it was a life-endangering rocket that could have easily hurt their small child. Also, some people point to that one shot of the dad apparently passed out on the couch surrounded by cola cans. Now They say the cans only say cola on them because Pixar didn't want to show what the cans really were. They were beer cans. Of course, having a few beers and falling asleep on the couch isn't a bad thing by any means. I've done that a fair few times. But people who push this theory say that it could be a sign of the father's alcoholism and of Sid's neglect. Moving on to number 6 now, we have the toy corpses. This is a pretty dark theory that contradicts the immortal theory we heard before. In July 2018, Baron Stigman tweeted out that his daughter had ruined Toy Story for him forever. Apparently, she said that if one of the toys died, then Andy wouldn't know and he'd keep on playing with its corpse. Before long, this tweet blew up with people sharing their shock and horror at this theory. One user said this thought had scarred them for life.
Dave. Another thank them for ruining Toy Story as well. What about you guys? Is that thought going to just creep you out every time you watch Toy Story? Maybe it's done that to me already. Coming in at number 5 now guys, we have the Illuminati. This is perhaps one of the most bizarre theories I've heard so far in anything actually. I can't even quite wrap my head around it, but here I go. It was written on the Brain Bender site by David B. He says that the plot of Toy Story 3 is a clever predictive programming of what the Illuminati would do if they were in power. They say that as Alex Jones predicts, if nuclear bombs ever went off in America American cities, the Illuminati would use it as an excuse to start the North American Union, which is meant to be the daycare from Toy Story 3. At first, this union, like the daycare, will seem like a good thing, but eventually it will lead to a nightmare scenario. If you aren't sold on this theory yet, and trust me, neither am I, they provide one last piece of evidence. Lotso the Bear made a comment in the movie about constructing a pyramid with himself at the top, just like the Illuminati pyramid. It's Lotso! He's made us into a pyramid, and he put himself on top! Anyone concur with Ken? If you want to read this full story, then please go and check it out. Perhaps you can make some more sense out of it than me. Moving on to number four now, we have special training. This theory comes from Reddit user Octogenarian Sandwich. Great name. He made a post where he addresses the issue about Buzz pretending to be a toy. So in the first Toy Story movie, you'll remember that Buzz thinks he is an actual space ranger. He refuses to acknowledge that he is a toy. It takes a long time before Woody and the others can convince him. Okay, that's fine. But why does Buzz still freeze up whenever humans come into the room? That's something only toys do. If he thinks he's an actual space ranger, then he should just keep acting normally. Why is he freezing up like that? Well, this theory states that he was actually trained to do that because he's a unique toy. Perhaps every single Buzz Lightyear is a specially trained spy. Stay with me here. In order to fit in, Buzz has to do what every spy does, fit in with the locals, even if this means pretending to freeze in position when a human enters the room. If this is true, then who programmed all the Buzz Lightyears? And where does this theory even end? Moving on to number three now, we have Sid the Savior. So this is about the second time now where I'm about to make you sympathize with Sid. This is the theory. Sid knows that toys are alive. He learned this after they attacked him on Woody's command in the first movie when Woody was trying to save Buzz. Woody did that because he also knew it was the only way to save the mutant toys from being mashed together with parts that weren't their own by Sid. However, Sid's new knowledge has led him to become a garbage man by the time we get to Toy Story 3 so that he can actually save the toys. He does this to make sure all the toys that get thrown out aren't chucked into the incinerator or just thrown onto a dump. People say that he takes them back to his home and he fixes them up. They might still be sort of twisted mutants, but at least they're alive. That's a nice thing. I guess. Moving on to number two now, we have Evil Woody. This is a theory posted by Reddit user Itchy Rabbit. They suggested that Woody is not so different from Lotso the Evil Bear in Toy Story 3. The only real difference is that Woody had a kid. Andy. This is the only thing that saved him from being as evil as Lotso. If Andy had bought a new Woody toy in the first movie, then Woody would have turned up just like Lotso. Hurt, bitter, angry, and wanting revenge on the world. Both Woody and Lotso are leaders, and they go through a lot to try and get back to their respective kids. For those people who see Woody as a perfect being, Itchy Rabbit points to Woody's darker side in the first movie when he started to feel like he was being replaced by Buzz Lightyear. Luckily, everything turned out alright there, but perhaps in a parallel universe, there may be a Toy Story where Woody is the evil toy that needs to be overthrown. And finally, number one. And finally, at number one now, we have the Holocaust. Now, this is at the number one spot for a reason. It's not my theory. My job in this video is to just present theories that other people come up with. And this is definitely the darkest one that I've seen so far. It came from John Hoffman of UGO, who said that the toys being abandoned by Andy for college is similar to Jewish people being abandoned by countries as the Third Reich began to spread across Europe before World War II. Woody gathers the toys to try and form a plan. They refuse to be abandoned and give up. Buzz Lightyear steps forward and suggests they hide in an attic. For Hoffman, this drew parallels to many Jewish people who tried to hide in attics from the Nazis, most famously Anne Frank and her family. Perhaps the darkest comparison is that they are being taken to Sunnyside Daycare, which is meant to be a supposed concentration camp, where they find themselves trapped among others in the same situation as them. I won't go into any more details there. It's a disturbing comparison, to say the least, perhaps even an unnecessary one, but it's one that exists online, and so there you go. I laid it out for you today. 
Starting us off at number 10 is that Wheezy is actually evil. Remember that cute little squishy penguin toy named Wheezy from Toy Story 2? Well, there's a theory out there that he is actually the bad guy of the movie and not Al from Al's Toy Barn. Wheezy was one of Andy's favorite toys once upon a time, but eventually was forgotten about and left on a shelf to get covered in dust and lose his squeaker. Well, Woody and Buzz's rivalry first started in the first movie because Andy forgot about Woody while he was playing with Buzz. That made Woody get jealous. Obviously, Woody ended up overcoming that jealousy, but maybe Wheezy didn't. Maybe his jealousy actually fueled a plan to make Woody be at the yard sale and get snatched up by some toy collector, with Wheezy making it back in the house himself and no longer having Woody for competition. This theory really hurts me because I remember feeling so sorry for Wheezy when I watched Toy Story 2 for the first time. I still remember seeing it in theaters and he was so lovable and he was just so hurt that you just you just fell for him. But now I'm gonna need to watch Toy Story 2 again. Coming in at number 9 is Toy Story Illuminati. That's right, there are many people online all around the world that say Toy Story 3 is one huge reference to the famous conspiracy group known as the Illuminati. How does this make sense? Well, many believe that Lotso, the film's antagonist, brainwashed Buzz Lightyear by resetting Buzz from play to demo mode. One of the other big pieces of evidence that supports this theory is a line of dialogue that is spoken by the Ken doll. He says, he made us into a pyramid and put himself on top. It's a bit of a weird line to have in a scene and many connected back to the Illuminati symbol of the triangle with the eye in the center of it. So does Toy Story 3 allude to the Illuminati? You tell me down in the comments because I don't think I can watch this one again after that heartbreaking ending. If you haven't seen it yet, be careful. That one hit way too hard the first time around and I don't think I'm even, I'm not ready to relive it yet. Coming in at number eight is Woody and Mr. Andy. Now who is Mr. Andy? Well, I'm referring to Andy's missing father in the films. Many believe that since Woody is an old toy from an old TV show in the 50s known as Woody's Roundup, that maybe this toy was given to Andy by his father and maybe his father has since passed away. Meaning that Woody is not just a fun toy but also a sentimental and special possession of Andy's father. Ah, man oh man, did that one get like really sad just really really quick. But you know what? I got beef with this theory because in the movies you can see Andy with bed sheets and tons of posters and stuff in his room that have Woody plastered all over them. Would a TV show from the 50s still be making all of that merchandise in the mid 90s? I don't really think so. Or is it his father's? Maybe? I, I don't know. But I mean, I can't see him giving Andy literally everything that has Woody on it and letting him still use it. Because I mean, that's going to be some valuable stuff. And that stuff has got to be rare. And lastly, would they have made character bed sheets back in the 50s that look as good as the, what they do in the film? Eh, I don't know. I'm not really sold on this one, but let me know what you think. Coming in at number seven is Jesse and Mrs. Andy. Now, who is Mrs. Andy? Well, this time I'm referring to Andy's mom. There is a theory out there that cowgirl Jesse is actually Andy's mom's old toy. Where's the proof? Well, we all know that Jesse's former owner name was Emily, and Andy's mom's name is never specified in any of the films. But in one of the flashbacks through the films, Emily can be seen wearing a Jesse cowgirl hat, just like the hat that Andy is seen wearing in the movies, as it looks a lot. More more like Jesse's hat than it does Woody's. So does that make the Toy Story 3 ending even sadder? With not just Andy saying goodbye to his childhood playmates, but also Andy's mom saying a final goodbye to her toy in that special time in her life? My god! What am I doing to myself here? Coming in at number six, we have Woody equals Lotso. That's right, without Andy, many think Woody could have ended just up as antagonistic and evil as Lotso. No, not Woody. Easy, easy, let me explain. Lotso, the big pink stuffed bear, handled his leadership at Sunnyside Daycare much like a dictator. He sucked. Lotso was accidentally abandoned in his owner's old home, and when he finally got to see her again, he found out that she had a new favorite toy and that he had already been forgotten. His little pink stuffed heart was then shattered and led him to being the bad guy in Toy Story 3. Now, if Woody didn't have Andy for his owner, many believe that Woody could have become just like Lotso. Woody's story in the first movie begins with his jealousy towards Buzz, but Woody changes his mindset because he didn't want to lose Andy the way that Lotso lost his owner. So, Woody could have been just as evil as of a character as Lotso in another rendition of the story, but he didn't. Or maybe the story hasn't ended. 
Coming in at our halfway point is poor Sid. There's a theory out there that Sid wasn't actually a bad kid at all. Maybe he was just a product of a poor home life. One reason is that back in the 90s, it wasn't as easy to just buy whatever you wanted online. So some think that the possibly life-threatening rocket toy that is meant for much older kids was mailed to him after his parents ordered it and didn't care that he was too young or nor that he was left alone with this dangerous rocket. There's also a scene in the movie that shows Sid's dad passed out in front of the TV with cola cans strewn all over the floor. But maybe those cola cans were actually wobbly pops and not just normal pops if you catch my drift. So maybe Sid began experimenting and building and taking par apart toys and acting out because this was just a desperate call for attention and love that he never got from his parents. Who knows? And to be honest, I don't think there I think there are extremely rare cases of bad kids. Something always sparks bad behavior, but hey, I never met Sid personally, so you be the judge, maybe he is a bad guy. Coming in at number 4, we have Sid is a garbage man, and this is where I'm going to say that he's not a bad guy now because in a scene in Toy Story 3, we can see a garbage man pick up a load of garbage all the while he is rocking out to some awesome tunes. But if you look closely, you will see that this garbage man is wearing the same t-shirt that Sid wore as a kid. But this guy seems happy and in good spirits. So how is this Sid? Well, many people think that Sid changed his ways after learning that toys could talk. And the reason he became a garbage man was that so he could save all of the forgotten toys out there so they don't get incinerated at the city dump. Or he can even fix them by making some weird mishmash toy combos like the baby head with spider leg or the uh, fishing pole with the with the legs, you know? Maybe he just wanted to give some love to some toys that weren't necessarily going to get it anymore. So Sid is a garbage man for now because this next theory actually gets much much darker. Starting us off in our top 3 at number 3, we have that Sid is actually dead. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, that escalated quickly. I mean, one minute he's a garbage guy, next minute he's no longer with us. If you watched Pixar's 2017 movie Coco, there is a scene with the skeleton on stage that has the exact same t-shirt as Sid from Toy Story. Toy Story 3 came out in 2010, so that means Sid worked as a garbage man until his untimely death that led him to be a rocker in the afterlife, in Coco. Maybe, I mean Coco does take place in Mexico and Toy Story is definitely not set in Mexico, so maybe it's just a small easter egg, but if Sid is indeed the rocker skeleton, then what happened? Coming in at number 2 we have immortality, the exact opposite of our number 3 spot. Many people believe that the toys in the Pixar universe are actually immortal. Since these toys are not actually organic living beings, many believe that these toys could in fact live forever and that the only way to meet their demise is if they are melted down. Which when you think about it, actually makes that scene in the first Toy Story with Sid burning Woody through the forehead even scarier. That's one way Woody would actually meet his demise. So. Yikes. The other proof is that Woody, Jesse, and Bullseye are all toys from the 50s and they just keep being passed on to new owners and never really seem to age. Especially with Rex's cameo in Wally. -E. Maybe this means that he is actually aware that humans are gone and now it's just robots. Ugh, yikes. No, for that reason alone, I would never want to be immortal. And finally, coming in at our number one spot is one of the darkest theories out there. It's that Toy Story 3 is actually an allegory to the horrific and disgusting events of World War too. One possible piece of evidence that supports this theory is that when Buzz suggests that the toys hide out in the attic to avoid being donated is a reference to Anne Frank and the events that she talks about in her diary. How they hid away from all the evil people. They also believe that the toys that were sent off to Sunnyside Daycare was also an analogy to people being sent away to the disgustingly horrific camps run by the followers of this is about as dark as they come here folks and I for one can see the similarities but I don't know if this is intentional. I think the events of World War are just so sad and horrific that they are so well known that many things can be alluded to being inspired by them. Or maybe many many stories and events are secretly inspired by them and are self conscious without us even fully realizing it. Either way, this one is crazy dark and probably ruined your childhood just a bit, so I'm sorry. And starting off number 10 now, we have the death of Woody. Ever since Toy Story 4 was announced, people have been asking why? I mean, don't get me wrong, we're all excited for another Toy Story movie, but the end of the third movie did seem quite final, didn't it? Even hardcore fans have been wondering why there is really a need for a fourth movie and some think the only thing that can justify it is the death of one of the main characters and many of them are leaning towards Woody. The synopsis of the movie contains the line, every ending is a new beginning. Now some fans think this has sort of a ominous death vibe to it and that the ending refers to Woody. Also the movie poster looks quite ominous. We see Woody by himself walking off into the distance and tipping his hat as if to say 
say goodbye. Moving on to number nine now, we have Wheezy Villain. There's a theory going around that Wheezy, the squeaky penguin toy that the other toys tried to help in the second movie, is actually the villain of the whole thing. In fact, some go as far as to say that he caused all the bad things that happened to the toys in that movie. The main crux of this argument is that Wheezy used to be Andy's favourite toy for a while before he was forgotten about and put on a shelf. In the first movie, we see how Woody got very jealous of Buzz, and so imagine how Wheezy must feel about all the other toys in the second movie. People think it was this jealousy that resulted in him putting Woody in the yard sale in the hopes he would be gone forever and he could finally be Andy's favourite toy once again. Moving on to number 8 now, we have Creepy Woody. This is a true story. Woody was initially going to be a ventriloquist dummy. That was the idea the team came up with. Then it was suggested that instead of a ventriloquist doll, they turned Woody into a cowboy. Everybody loves cowboys, right? Well, luckily they did go with that, obviously. I think every Toy Story fan can agree that a creepy ventriloquist doll Woody would have been quite a disturbing sight to see. I don't even want to think about that. Next up on number 7 now we have Toy Amnesia. That's what I'm calling this theory posted to Reddit by user Tommy M. Walker. Now he suggested that the toys in Toy Story will never remember Andy again. He says that the toys have personalities and memories that are imprinted on them. And once they have a new owner, their former memories are wiped away. This would be scary if true, especially for the fourth movie. As proof, he puts forward Toy Story 2. Jessie's last owner, Emily, loved her for a very long time, grew up and then donated her. Eventually, she was found by Al, who put her in storage where she completely forgot about her former life and only remembered when Woody arrived on the scene. If this is true, then do toys have memories wiped when they get new owners? We saw Toy Story 3 end with Andy handing over his toys to a new kid. Does this mean the toys will now forget Andy? That's quite a disturbing thought for every Toy Story fan. Coming at number 6 now, we have The War. This is another Reddit theory put forward by user Space Communist. He said that the first two movies are set during the space race of the 1960s, hence the old technology and obsession with toys like Buzz Lightyear going off into space. Then though, about 10 years passed and we're suddenly in Toy Story 3 where there's now laptops, online gaming and modern cars. It's a huge leap. It looks just like the past decade has been in real life. Where did all this technology come from? Well, this guy thinks a world war took place over the course of the movies. The technology advanced so rapidly during the war that it explains the leap we see between the movies. The the proof, he points to the maps we see. They seem to show the world map as very different to ours. Countries aren't the same, borders are just all over the place, almost as if a massive war took place. It is a crazy theory, but then again, we are talking about a world in which toys can talk, so I guess anything is possible. Moving on to number 5 now, we have Buzz Lightyear dies. So we talked at the start of the video about the possibility of Woody dying in Toy Story 4. Well, I'm afraid this sort of morbid speculation is not over. Some people think it's Buzz Lightyear that's going to get the chop, so to speak. This is mainly based on what Tim Allen, who voices Buzz, said in an interview on The Talk. He said, I gotta resist getting emotional. I don't want to give it away, but this is an incredibly great story. It is so emotional, it's so funny, it's so big, the idea they come up with, I am startled. I couldn't even get through the last scene, I would love to be a Washington leaker, I just can't do it. I can't give any more away. They've got great characters, but a couple of scenes towards the end were really hard to get through. I couldn't even get through the last scene. Now is that because Buzz dies? That would be a pretty good reason for why he couldn't even do the last scene. What do you think? Next up, number four now, we have Real Mutants. For a children's movie, those mutants in the first Toy Story were pretty creepy, I won't lie. Some of you may have found comfort in the fact that those creatures don't exist in real life, obviously, and that they only exist in the movie. Well, sorry to burst your bubble, but that's not entirely true. In the early 90s, the Unknown Museum in Marin, California, featured a host of mutant toys as part of their exhibition. It just so happened that this exhibition was seen by the Toy Story animators. They were inspired by what they saw and created their own ones in real life, which in turn will go on to inspire their designs for the mutant toys in Toy Story. That means that somewhere out there, tucked away in a dark and dusty box, those mutant toys may really exist. Waiting and waiting. Coming in at number 3 now, we have Andy's Money. This is a Reddit theory put forward by user Just Embarrassing, who said that Andy doesn't really love Woody. Shock horror. 
He just knows the monetary value of him. In Toy Story 2, we learn that Woody used to be part of the hit TV show Woody's Roundup, along with Jesse, Stinky Pete, and Bullseye. Andy must be aware of this. He even refers to Jesse as Bazooka Jane. The only way he would have known that is if he looked it up. If he did that, he'd know that these toys together would be worth a lot of money. Perhaps that's why he cared so much about them. He just wanted them to increase in value to the point where selling them would get a lot of money for he and his sister, as well as their mom, who is presumably a single parent. Now, this isn't to say that Andy doesn't like Woody, but maybe the money is a huge bonus, shall we say. Moving on to number two now, we have Woody's girlfriend. This one may only be scary to those of you who believe in the true love of Woody and Bo Peep. It was actually a pretty close call. It almost didn't happen. When Pixar first wrote Toy Story, they didn't want Bo Peep to be Woody's girlfriend. They actually wanted it to be Barbie. I know. Can you imagine? Woody and Barbie. Fortunately, or unfortunately, depending on how you see it, Mattel, the owners of Barbie, didn't have much faith in Toy Story, and so they didn't give permission for her to be used in the first movie. For many Toy Story fans, this was a very close call, and a scary one to think that Woody and Barbie were very close to being an item. And finally, number one now, we have the power of imagination. This theory is based on the growing assumption among a number of Toy Story fans that the reason toys can walk and talk is solely down to the kid's imagination. It is literally the child's own imagination that gives them the ability to walk and talk. Support for this theory grew after the release of the Toy Story 4 trailer, which showed a new toy made out of a spork and some household objects claiming that it didn't belong there and it isn't a toy. Well, perhaps that means that kids can bring any object to life, even normal household ones. Perhaps this is a clue as to what is to come in the next movie. If a child has an imagination that's strong enough, they can turn any inanimate object, even a weapon, into a walking, talking entity with his own free will. Now, that would be an interesting story. 